Hey guys, it's JR. Hey, just a real quick video showing the house that we're building. We decided to go with the metal building on the outside um, just for ease of and, and how quickly it goes up. Uh, the metal contractor that we used, he did everything as far as the concrete pad and putting up the metal building itself. And I, I hadn't done this before, so there was a couple things that I learned. First of all, and that might it might be handy for anybody else who's thinking about it. The inside's constructed with these uh, steel posts and beams and everything, and so the outside of the building, this is a this is a thirty foot by forty foot building, um, but the inside buildable area is uh, about eight and a half inches inside that outside skin. You got these. Uh, purlins that run on the sea on, on uh, for, for supporting the roof and then essentially the same thing running on the side supporting these side panels and since the the way this was constructed and engineered there's a, a, a couple of posts and a beam that runs oh, it's going to be hard to see but it runs right through well you can see the post right here so this is about half the, the midpoint of the building. And it sticks in further than everything else because this side beam here is on the outside and then th this post is butted up to it and then an extra eight and a half inches out. So we had planned to build inside the steel building area, but then we had to bump out our little corners because of these posts. Um, had we known that, we might have changed things around a little bit. But as it is, we, we just have one post here in the corner. And this is, a, this is a, a closet, so no big deal. And then we have the other post over here, kind of at in the corner of our little sitting area up front here. So we had to bump them out just a little bit. And we'll drywall around them and make them look okay. But that's uh, that's what we ended up doing there. And then to secure the walls to the building, what we did is the bottom, the bottom's obviously pressure treated uh, bottom plate and it's, it's nailed into the concrete, you know, every two feet or so. You can see those, those nails are shot in. But then we secured the, the studs with these uh, hurricane ties, um, screwed them into the, into the metal and then screwed them into the studs. And we did that about every other stud. You can see them over here. Just to just to level up the the walls and to make sure that along with being on the concrete and then being nailed to each other, they were also secured to the metal building. That way, if anything blows in the wind or anything, you're not getting stuff slapping against each other and making a racket. So that's that's what we did. We ended up having, and then on the on the bottom here, there's a metal plate that's anchored to the concrete that the metal uh, panels, siding panels screw into. You can see these sh screws here and here. And and I was a little bit afraid of water intrusion there. When they installed it, they put down a, a bead of silicone and then put the plate down on it and anchored it to the concrete. So, I mean, theoretically, there shouldn't be very much water coming through there anyways, but there were some gaps, especially around these um, posts that go up the sides of the windows. And, and the butt joints where, where one plate stopped and then they started another one. At some of those areas, you could see light. So we decided we bought one of those do-it-yourself uh, two-part foam kits, probably about 750 bucks off of Amazon. And I hooked it up and sprayed it up. And we, we covered this whole bottom area up onto this vinyl-backed uh, insulation down over that entire plate. The plate was only about four or five inches and then the rest of this was concrete. So we filled that whole thing, just trying to seal it from bugs and, and moisture and water and everything like that. And we also ran up these posts that are on either side of the windows. We went up either side of the door there and really tried to dry it in. It was also handy for some of these areas that we couldn't get uh, full insulation, like between here and the shop area. This is our electrical panel, the backside of it. There wasn't enough space there to put a full bat of 
fiberglass insulation. So we filled that up with foam. And then also above, uh, might be kind of hard to see, but above the uh, bathroom there, there was some areas that were gonna be hard to get to with regular fiberglass insulation. So we blew some foam up in there. The foam was nice because we were able to get around some of our uh, some of our sheet metal and duct work as well, um, and, and just kind of fill any any and all gaps. We filled a lot of the penetrations between this wall and the shop wall. If we had a pipe coming through, or if we had electric coming through, so the foam was actually really handy. Went around this whole area, got it all dried in. And now we're at the drywall stage and that's pretty straightforward as far as just getting the drywall up on the studs and and uh, then we got a nailing inspection and then we'll go from there. But I wanted to show a couple, of the, a couple of the construction items when it comes to framing out the inside of a steel building that uh, you might not be aware of yet. And if, if you're thinking about it, you wanna keep in mind you're building about eight and a half inches inside the steel building. And if you have additional interior posts, those are gonna be an extra eight and a half inches uh, inside. So you gotta kind of plan around those things. And then obviously the trying to waterproof and bug proof as much as possible, everything and, and getting stuff insulated. So it's been, it's been fun so far, but there you go. There's kind of a, a couple of heads up if you're thinking of going this route.